Sometimes your only option is to run. When a volcano erupts big time, it spits out a fast-moving and incredibly destructive mass of material known as a pyroclastic flow. And according to the United States Geological Survey, if you ever find yourself in the path of one, you should run in the opposite direction and run fast. Pyroclastic flows are made up of a basal flow of volcanic ash, lava, rock, and gases, which move beneath a cloud of ash. Their temperatures can exceed 1,000 degrees Celsius, and they can move at 700 kilometers per hour. Typically, pyroclastic flows move downslope, but they can go uphill when the ratio of gas to ash is higher. This is known as a pyroclastic surge. These dense pyroclastic surges can even move over water. Pyroclastic flows generally destroy everything in their path, including vegetation, buildings, and people. There are generally two kinds of pyroclastic flow. The first type forms when an eruption column cools, and the ash becomes too dense to maintain an upward thrust. The second type is rarer, and occurs when so much pressure builds up inside a volcano that it erupts laterally and boils over. The last known example of this is when Mount St. Helens in Washington State erupted in 1980. So there you have it. If you ever happen to be near a volcano when it blows its top, now you know what to do. Here's five more stories about volcanoes. The Ring of Fire is home to 90% of the world's earthquakes. Hundreds were killed and more injured when two killer earthquakes hit Japan and Ecuador over the weekend. Despite occurring only 32 hours apart, experts believe the two are not related. The only commonality is that both are located in the seismically active Ring of Fire. The Ring of Fire is a horseshoe-shaped arc around the Pacific Ocean that extends from South America all the way to New Zealand. At about 25,000 miles long, its most visible features are the volcanoes dotting the coast, roughly 75% of all active volcanoes on Earth. Throughout history, cataclysmic eruptions have occurred in this area, so Johnny Cash was on spot when he sang that the Ring of Fire burns, burns, burns. 90% of the world's earthquakes also occur along the ring, caused by the sliding of tectonic plates, huge slabs of the Earth's crust. When plates slide horizontally past each other, some parts get stuck. Built up stress in those areas eventually cause the rock to break or slip and the plates to lurch forward, causing earthquakes. Plates that collide form convergent plate boundaries, which give rise to volcanoes through subduction. Those that pull apart form divergent boundaries, which become the site for seafloor spreading and rift valleys. A less powerful quake in Tonga also occurred Sunday. It too is believed to be unrelated to those in Ecuador and Japan. Despite this, an increase in global seismic activity in recent years is still cause for concern. Alaska's most active volcano looks poised to erupt. Experts warn that one of Alaska's most active volcanoes will be erupting soon. Warnings have been issued by the Alaska Volcano Observatory, an organization formed to study and monitor volcanic activity in the state. The Alaska Volcano Observatory has increased the alert level of Alaska's most active volcano, the Pavlov Volcano. The volcano erupted earlier this year, triggering a red alert, the highest of four levels. The latest Pavlov eruption in March sent an ash cloud as high as 37,000 feet into the atmosphere, covering villages and producing volcanic mud and lava flows. Eruptions of this degree cause issues for jet-powered airplanes. Volcanic ash clouds consist of small tephra, which are bits of pulverized rock and glass. These are only distinguishable from regular clouds via satellites in space. When these rocks and glass are sucked into an airplane's jet engines, they melt and coagulate, fusing the blades and other parts of the turbine, thereby causing engine failure. The eruption was the first for Pavlov since November 2014, and noted by the AVO as the most energetic since 1996. Pavlov is one of the most consistently active volcanoes in the Aleutian Arc. It has erupted six times since 1996, and 21 times in the past 50 years. Giant magma reservoir found beneath Yellowstone supervolcano. A giant magma reservoir beneath the Yellowstone supervolcano has been discovered and mapped for the first time by scientists from the University of Utah. 
scientists discovered a giant reservoir of magma beneath the Yellowstone supervolcano in Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming. Seismic waves sent out by earthquakes travel through hotter, molten material more slowly. Scientists used seismometers to measure the time these seismic waves took to pass through the molten material to calculate how much of it there is underground. The results show that the magma reservoir lies 12 to 28 miles beneath the supervolcano and has a volume of 11,000 cubic miles. The reservoir contains 98% solid rock and only 2% molten rock. The Yellowstone supervolcano has erupted three times in the last two million years, with its most recent eruption 640,000 years ago. Could a new volcano be forming in New Zealand? Scientists say a buildup of magma found near a small town in New Zealand is responsible for thousands of small earthquakes in the area. The presence of the magma could also mean that a new volcano will form above the Earth's surface. A huge magma buildup has been discovered on New Zealand's North Island, near the town of Matata, in the Topal Volcanic Zone. Scientists using GPS data and satellite images say the magma has caused a 400 square kilometer area of land to rise 40 centimeters since 1950. The magma probably also triggered thousands of small earthquakes in recent years that were previously attributed to tectonic shifts. The researchers claim there is enough magma located 10 kilometers beneath the town to fill 80,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. The magma could cause a volcano to form but the process would take hundreds or thousands of years. It is also possible that over time, the magma may cool and solidify underneath the Earth. New Zealand is home to several active volcanoes, but there have been none near Matata for at least 400,000 years. So maybe it's time for Matata's 650 residents to start considering a move. Small volcanic eruptions may help slow down global warming. Scientists found that small volcanic eruptions release larger than expected amounts of a gas that cools the atmosphere and slows global warming. It has long been known that volcanic eruptions eject sulfur dioxide, an atmosphere cooling gas. However, scientists previously only took large scale eruptions into account when evaluating the impact of volcanic eruptions on global temperatures. During volcanic eruptions, sulfur dioxide is ejected into the upper atmosphere. When sulfur dioxide interacts with oxygen, it can form droplets of sulfuric acid, which can linger in the upper atmosphere for months. The sulfuric acid, which deflects sun rays, is stored at the intersection between the troposphere and stratosphere, about 10 to 15 kilometers above Earth. The past 15 years have seen significantly more small eruptions than the previous two decades, contributing to a slowdown in global warming. But this is expected to be a brief intermission and temperatures are expected to rise faster in the future.